Victorian scientist Johann Fulrot holds the evidence of an unknown ancient species. Wo habt ihr das gefunden? Wir haben es dort gefunden. Und was war da sonst noch? Uh, vielleicht noch ein Bein. Uh, zeig mir bitte. It's hard to even guess what the creature was without more evidence. Nur noch diesen Bein. And they haven't got much. Oh, und wo ist der Rest? Wir haben sie weggeschmissen. Es weggeschmissen? Ja. Wenn ihr jetzt noch was findet, schmeißt bitte gar nichts weg. Haltet es für mich. Ja, meine. Ich nehme jetzt erstmal diese zwei mit. Gut. Danke. Fulrod gives the bones to more qualified scientists. But even when more pieces emerge from the same cave, they completely fail to identify them. Opinions vary wildly, from a barbarian who'd fought the Roman legions to a lost Russian Cossack even the victim of some unknown congenital deformity. But a new idea begins to take center stage. Fulrod himself suggests Neanderthal might be an early ancestor of modern man. To many Victorians, this seemed the most absurd notion of them all. Then, in 1859, just three years after the bones were found, the notion suddenly catches on. Charles Darwin publishes his groundbreaking work, The Origin of Species. He suggests that all living things had descended from earlier, simpler forms by the process of evolution. And if it was true for every living thing on Earth, then that had to include us. 1859, Darwin publishes The Origin of Species. And a lot of people think that this book was, was paid attention to, but it wasn't. Most people couldn't care a jot about whether, whether a fish evolved into an amphibian. No one cared. The big question, the question that everybody wanted to know is, where did we come from? And it's in the 1850s and 60s that science steps to the plate and says, I'm going to give you the answer. And boy, did they give us an answer. If humans had evolved from a simpler form, the implication to the scientific mind is obvious and disturbing. Humans could only have descended from apes. The impact on the Victorian psyche is profound. Many believe evolution will make them little more than animals. Darwin stayed away from that question. He knew he was going to get into trouble. He writes to friends and says, uh-uh, I'm not going to talk about that. Far too controversial. And it's up to other people. New scientists, a younger generation of scientists, coming on in the 1850s and 60s, Seeing an opening, seeing that they could make a career, if they were to answer this question, where do humans come from? Inspired by the Neanderthal bones, evolution becomes the hottest topic of the age. But it will stay little more than a theory without more evidence. Suddenly, scientists' attention turns to an ancestor that would link us to the apes. An ape man a missing link and they would go to the ends of the earth to find it in the late 1800s the world of science has become obsessed with the idea of a missing link between apes and men and German scientist Johann Fulrot believes Neanderthal man is that link Neanderthal seems so promising when it's first presented. It seems like it's going to be the answer, but on closer inspection, it starts to fall apart. Most importantly, the key fossils just seem to be too much like humans. Neanderthal, at best, is a man with some ape qualities. Traveling back in time, our Neanderthal stands just 3,000 generations behind us at around 40,000 years ago. To find a true missing link, therefore, meant going further back in time, 
to something more ape-like. The question was, how much ape and how much man would it be? I think the idea of a missing link came from a, a very simple view of evolution and it's not surprising it was simple because of course these ideas were in their infancy but people had this idea of fixed types there were humans and there were apes and an evolutionary transition between those two types would somehow combine the features of both types there was no real conception that evolution could operate over vast periods of time um, and there could be complex mixtures of characteristics. So people were looking for something essentially that would be halfway between a living human and a living ape. But where could the evidence be found? By the 1880s, it's believed this has to be where apes and primitive people live side by side. And so, the search moves from Europe to Southeast Asia and the Dutch island colony of Sumatra, home to both man and ape. October 1889. The monsoon season is beginning. And no one tries to negotiate the dense rainforest unless they have to. Two years ago, Eugène Dubois had a promising career as a doctor in Amsterdam, but his obsession with human origins led him to take up the challenge to find the missing link. Now, after abandoning his career and his civilized European home, the great dream has turned into a nightmare. He's invested everything that he had into finding this missing link. Dubois was the worst kind of person to go out to the field because he had no experience. He doesn't know how to teach his crew. He doesn't know how to take care of them. They're out, they're out in the field. It's raining. It's a complete shambles. He's found caves, which he hoped would produce the fossils he's looking for. They haven't. Now his engineer has given up digging, and all but a few of his convict laborers have run away or are sick. To make matters worse, Dubois has got malaria. The same deadly disease has already claimed the life of his first engineer. And he is about to lose all patience with the second. What are you doing? Can I go him? His engineer has just lost his workmate and he hasn't been paid for a month. But this means nothing to Dubois. Poor Eugene. He desperately wants to find something, desperately wants to make a name for himself. He comes up with absolutely nothing. After months in the jungle, Dubois has just a few animal fossils to show for the time and money he's spent. This is, this is alles, ja, meneer. Oh, this is net niet goed genoeg. Dubois had many trials and tribulations, and uh, someone who was not as driven, not as determined, uh, not as obsessed, uh, I'm sure, would have given up and gone home. There is nothing. We have gesucht. Dubois realizes his attempt to find the missing link has been a failure. Even though and he fires his engineer. Good on. Good on. <laughs> 